the then Prince Charles and Camilla Parker Bowles wedding. Now, I'm not going to tell you the usual tale that everyone tells about the Queen and the Grand National and the winning post and all that. This is a different one out of Angela Levin's book, Camilla. Now, as the day approached, Camilla, like all brides, got increasingly stressed, but she had a lot more on her plate than most. She was actually quite terrified about the reaction to their wedding. She was scared that it was going to be sort of damaged in some way that, you know, something awful would happen, like they'd get eggs thrown at them or something, you know, really violent or mean would happen. Or she was even worried that no one would turn up to cheer them on or that it would just be a big nothing and it would be embarrassing. She was just riddled with all this stress and fear about the day. Now she's normally quite a cool customer. She's not easily rattled. So she sort of internalized all this stress and she got really ill. And just about a week before the wedding, her best friend said this. She was so ill with an appalling cold and sinusitis that had given her a very croaky voice. I made her some chicken soup and told her that everyone gets well if they have chicken soup. She sounds like a lovely friend. That's Lucia or Lucia. Um, Not quite sure whether it's the Spanish or the Italian way to pronounce that. Um, I'll say Lucia. Lucia was extremely worried about her health. She was still so ill, we didn't know if she could make the wedding. Now, as you know, the wedding was put off anyway because the Pope died. And so, you know, I could imagine that (laughs) the florist could hold the flowers for another day. I mean, the stress of that, they had to put it off by one day. Um, But poor Camilla, so she's in bed at raging temperature, whole bit, and really, really ill. So wedding day morning comes and Camilla refuses to get out of bed. Like she literally refused to get out of bed and her sister and Lucia didn't know what to do. They were sort of looking at each other, you know, across the room, sort of like, what are we going to do, you know? And then in the end, her sister said, if you don't get up, I will put on your dress and I will go and get married. (laughs) I'll do it. If you don't get up, I'm going to put on the dress and I'll go and do it and I'll pretend to be you. Actually, if you see uh, Camilla's sister, they do look a lot alike. So with the big hat and everything, maybe no one would have known. (laughs) She could have stepped in. That would have been really awkward, though, because then she would have been married to Charles. That would have caused all sorts of problems, I would imagine. And I think she's also already married. Not sure about that. I'll have to look it up. So that finally got her up and dressed. And they said with only enough time to spare. So it would have been really tense. It was guessed that the crowd amounted to about 20,000, nowhere near the number that would turn up for a traditional royal wedding. But that was fantastic. They were so relieved relieved because while Camilla was still refusing to get out of bed they were starting to panic a little bit the palace was starting to panic a little bit because they didn't expect huge crowds but they did want a little bit of a crowd to make it look good because but you know when they expected people to start to gather they didn't They didn't gather till quite late. And so it was just this huge relief when finally they realized that there was actually going to be a crowd interested and cheering when they arrived. The few boos were almost, so you could hear them, drowned out by the cheering majority shouting good wishes and waving the Union Jack. Oh, that's gorgeous. If Prince Charles is going to be king, I think we want him to be a happy king, said one man in the crowd, and Camilla will make him that. And so then the rest unfolds, as you already know. A few little tidbits that I loved in this book was the fact that Prince Charles, or then Prince Charles, uh, festooned Windsor Castle with daffodils, with yellow daffodils, thousands and thousands and thousands of them. They're just terribly romantic. And the other thing that was really lovely was the description when they finally came back uh, to their staff to get ready for the wedding reception and the reaction when they walked up the stairs. We all stood waiting to greet them and they both came up the stairs crying. Oh, isn't that gorgeous? For the first time we said, hello, your Royal Highness. It was a very powerful moment 
and so emotional for us all. In the end, we were all crying. Oh, that's just so lovely. I just, I can imagine it. I can really imagine it. And this other little final tidbit I want to share because I think it is just so lovely. At one point, he looked at his bride in a way that revealed he at last knew what true love meant. Camilla looked radiant and slightly disbelieving (laughs) as if a huge weight had at last been lifted from both their shoulders. I just can't believe it. I just can't believe it. So that was when they were actually standing on the steps outside the registry office. No, that was outside after the church service because the queen actually looked at her at that point and gave her a really warm, sunny, sort of welcoming smile because they went to the church part, to the church service, but they didn't go to the registry office. So there you go. That's the story of Prince Charles and Camilla's wedding. And I just think in this in these cynical times, sometimes it's just nice to hear a feel-good story. And I must say, I'm glad Camilla managed to get out of bed. I'll see you again really soon. Bye.